sonnet. A sonnet is a poem in a specific form which originated in Italy. Giacomo de Lentini is credited with its invention. The term sonnet is derived from the Italian word sonetto, from Old Provencal sonnet a little poem, from sun song, from Latin sonus a sound. By the 13th century it signified a poem of 14 lines that follows a strict rhyme scheme and specific structure. Conventions associated with the sonnet have evolved over its history. Writers of sonnets are sometimes called sonneteers, although the term can be used derisively. The sonnet was created by Giacomo de Lentini, head of the Sicilian school under Emperor Frederick II. Gidon d'Arezzo rediscovered it and brought it to Tuscany where he adapted it to his language when he founded the Siculo Tuscan School, or Gittonian School of Poetry, 1235-1294. He wrote almost 250 sonnets. Other Italian poets of the time, including Dante Alighieri, 1265-1321, and Guido Cavalcanti, circa 1250-1300, wrote sonnets, but the most famous early sonneteer was Petrarch. Other fine examples were written by Michelangelo. The structure of a typical Italian sonnet of the time included two parts that together formed a compact form of argument. First, the octave, forms the proposition, which describes a problem, or question, followed by a sestet, two tercets, which proposes a resolution. Typically, the ninth line initiates what is called the turn, or volta, which signals the move from proposition to resolution. Even in sonnets that don't strictly follow the problem-slash-resolution structure, the ninth line still often marks a turn by signaling a change in the tone, mood, or stance of the poem. Later, the abba abba pattern became the standard for Italian sonnets. For the sestet there were two different possibilities, CDE CDE and CDC CDC. In time, other variants on this rhyming scheme were introduced, such as CDC DCD. Petrarch typically used an abba abba pattern for the octave, followed by either CDE CDE or CDC CDC rhymes in the sestet. The symmetries, ABBA versus CDC, of these rhyme schemes have also been rendered in musical structure in the late 20th century composition Scrivo Invento by Elliot Carter, inspired by Petrarch's Sonnet 212, Beato in Sonio. In English, both the English or Shakespearean sonnet, and the Italian Petrarch in sonnet are traditionally written in iambic pentameter. The first known sonnets in English, written by Sir Thomas Wyatt and Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, used the Italian. Petrarch in form, as did sonnets by later English poets, including John Milton, Thomas Gray, William Wordsworth, and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Early 20th century American poet Edna St. Vincent Millay also wrote mostly Petrarch in sonnets. On His Blindness by Milton, gives a sense of the Petrarch in rhyme scheme poem style equals margin left, 2 am greater than when I consider how my light is spent, a to serve there with my maker, and present, a that murmur. Soon replies, God doth not need, see as kingly. Thousands at his bidding speed, see less than slash poem. Most sonnets in Dante's La Vida and Wova are Petrarchan. Chapter 7 gives sonnet o void shaper la via, with two sestets, op 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 op, and two quatrains, cddc cddc, and ch. 8, mort viana, with two sestets, oppa oppa, and two quatrains, cddc cddc. The sole confirmed surviving sonnet in the Occitan language is confidently dated to 1284, and is conserved only in Troubadour Manuscript P, an Italian chanson IRF 1310, now XLI.42 in the Biblioteca Lorenziana in Florence. It was written by Paolo and Franchi de Pistoia and is addressed to Peter III of Aragon. It employs the rhyme scheme of Abba Bob CD CD CD. This poem is historically interesting for its information on North Italian perspectives concerning the War of the Sicilian Vespers, the conflict between the Angevins and Aragonese for Sicily. Peter III and the Aragonese cause was popular in northern Italy at the time and Paolo Sonnet Issa celebration of his victory over the Angevins and Capetians in the Aragonese Crusade and Occitan Sonnet, dated to 1321 and assigned to one William of Almerichi is found in Jean de Nostradam and cited in Giovanni Mario Christian Beni's, Historia della Valgar Poesia. It congratulates Robert of Naples on his recent victory. Its authenticity is dubious. There are also two poorly regarded sonnets by the Italian Dante de Mano. In the 16th century, around Ronsard, 1524-1585, Joachim du Bellet, 1522-1560, and Jean-Antoine de Baif, 1532-1589, 
there formed a group of radical young noble poets of the court, generally known today as La Pléiade, although use of this term is debated, who began writing in, amongst other forms of poetry, the Petrarchan sonnet cycle, developed around an amorous encounter or an idealized woman. The character of La Pléiade literary program was given in Du Bellay's manifesto, The Defense and Illustration of the French Language, 1549 which maintained that French, like the Tuscan of Petrarch and Dante, was a worthy language for literary expression and which promulgated a program of linguistic and literary production, including the imitation of Latin and Greek genres, and purification. By the late 17th century poets on increasingly relied on stanza forms incorporating rhymed couplets, and by the 18th century fixed-form poems, and, in particular, the sonnet, were largely avoided. The resulting versification, less constrained by meter and rhyme patterns than Renaissance poetry, more closely mirrored prose. The Romantics were responsible for a return to, and sometimes a modification of, many of the fixed-form poems used during the 15th and 16th centuries, as well as for the creation of new forms. The sonnet however was little used until the Parnassians brought it back into favor, and the sonnet would subsequently find its most significant practitioner in Charles Baudelaire, 1821-1867. The traditional French sonnet form was however significantly modified by Baudelaire, who used 32 different forms of sonnet with non-traditional rhyme patterns to great effect in his Les Fleurs du Mal. When English sonnets were introduced by Thomas Wyatt, 1503-1542, in the early 16th century, his sonnets and those of his contemporary the Earl of Surrey were chief light translations from the Italian of Petrarch and the French of Ronsard and others. While Wyatt introduced the sonnet into English, it was Surrey who developed the rhyme scheme, a bob c d c d e f f g g, which now characterizes the English sonnet. Having previously circulated in manuscripts only, both poets' sonnets were first published at Dean Richard Tottle's Songe and Sonnets, better known as Tottle's Miscellany, 1557. It was, however, Sir Philip Sidney's sequence Astrophel and Stella, 1591 that started the English vogue for sonnet sequences. The next two decades saw sonnet sequences by William Shakespeare, Edmund Spencer, Michael Drayton, Samuel Daniel, Falk Greville, William Drummond of Hawthornden, and many others. These sonnets were all essentially inspired by the Petrarchan tradition, and generally treat of the poet's love for some woman, with the exception of Shakespeare's sequence of 154 sonnets. The form is often named after Shakespeare not because he was the first to write in this form but because became its most famous practitioner. The form consists of 14 lines structured as three quatrains and a couplet. The third quatrain generally introduces an unexpected sharp thematic or a majestic turn, the volta. In Shakespeare's sonnets, however, the volta usually comes in the couplet, and usually summarizes the theme of the poem or introduces a fresh new look at the theme. With only a rare exception, the meter is iambic pentameter. This example, Shakespeare's sonnet 116, illustrates the form, with some typical variances one may expect when reading an Elizabethan age sonnet with modern eyes. Poem style equals margin left, to m greater than let me not to the marriage of true minds, admit impediments, love is not love, b, which alters when it alteration finds, a or bends with the remover to remove, b, oh no, it is an ever fixed mark, c, that looks on tempests and is never shaken, d, it is the star to every wandering bark, C, whose worth's unknown although his height be taken. D, loves not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks, E within his bending sickle's compass come, F, love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, E but bears it out even to the edge of doom, F, less than slash poem brbrbr. Br. The prologue to Romeo and Juliet is also a sonnet, as is Romeo and Juliet's first exchange in Act 1, Scene 5. Lines 104 to 117, beginning with If I profane with my unworthiest hand, 104, and ending with Then move not while my prayer's effect I take, 117. The epilogue to Henry V is also in the form of a sonnet. A variant on the English form is the Spenserian sonnet, named after Edmund Spencer, circa 1552 to 1599, in which the rhyme scheme is a Bob BCBCCDCDEE. The linked rhymes of his quatrains suggest the linked rhymes of such Italian forms as terza rima. This example is taken from Amoretti. Poem style equals margin left, to m greater than happy ye leaves. When is those lily hands? Happy ye leaves. 
when as those lily hands, a which hold my life in their dead doing might, be shall handle you, and hold in love soft bands, alike captives trembling at the victor's sight. Be in happy lines on which, with starry light, be those lamping eyes will deign sometimes to look, see and read the sorrows of my dying sprite, be written with tears in heart's close bleeding book. See in happy rhymes. Bathed in the sacred brook, see of Helicon, when she derived is, d when ye behold that angel's blessed look, see my soul's long lacked food, my heaven's bliss. D leaves, lines, and rhymes seek her to please alone, e whom if ye please, I care for other none. E less than slash poem. In the 17th century, the sonnet was adapted to other purposes, with John Donne and George Herbert writing religious sonnets, see John Donne's Holy Sonnets, and John Milton using the sonnet as a general meditative poem. Probably Milton's most famous sonnet is When I Consider How My Light Is Spent, titled by a later editor on his blindness. Both the Shakespearean and Petrarchan rhyme schemes were popular throughout this period, as well as many variants. The fashion for the sonnet went out with the Restoration, and hardly any sonnets were written between 1670 and Wordsworth's time. However, sonnets came back strongly with the French Revolution. Wordsworth himself wrote hundreds of sonnets, of which amongst the best known are Upon Westminster Bridge, The World Is Too Much With Us in London, 1802 addressed to Milton, his sonnets were essentially modeled on Milton apostrophe s. Keats and Shelley also wrote major sonnets. Keats's sonnets used formal and rhetorical patterns inspired partly by Shakespeare, and Shelley innovated radically, creating his own rhyme scheme for the sonnet Ozymandias. Sonnets were written throughout the 19th century, but, apart from Elizabeth Barrett Browning's sonnets from the Portuguese and the sonnets of Dante Gabriel Rossetti, there were few very successful traditional sonnets. Modern Love, 1862 by George Meredith is a collection of 50 16-line sonnets about the failure of his first marriage. Gerard Manley Hopkins wrote several major sonnets, often in sprung rhythm, such as the Windhover, and also several sonnet variants such as the 10-line Curdle sonnet Pied Beauty and the 24-line Caudate sonnet that nature is a Heraclitean fire. Hopkins' poetry was, however, not published until 1918. By the end of the 19th century, the sonnet had been adapted into a general purpose form of great flexibility. In the United States, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote many sonnets, among others the cycle Divina Commedia, Divine Comedy. He used the Petrarch in rhyme scheme. Emma Lazarus also published many sonnets. She is the author of perhaps the best-known American sonnet, The New Colossus. In Canada during the last decades of the century, the Confederation poets and especially Archibald Lampman were known for their sonnets, which were mainly on pastoral themes. This flexibility was extended even further in the 20th century. Among the major poets of the early modernist period, Robert Frost, Edna St. Vincent Millay and E. E. Cummings all used the sonnet regularly. William Butler Yeats wrote the major sonnet Lita and the Swan, which uses half rhymes. Wilfred Owen's sonnet Anthem for Doomed Youth is another sonnet of the early 20th century. Spaniard Federico Garcia Lorca also wrote sonnets. W. H. Auden wrote two sonnet sequences and several other sonnets throughout his career, and widened the range of rhyme schemes used considerably. Auden also wrote one of the first unrhyme sonnets in English, The Secret Agent, 1928. Robert Lowell wrote five books of unrhymed American sonnets, including his Pulitzer Prize winning volume The Dolphin, 1973. Half rhymed, unrhymed, and even unmetrical sonnets have been very popular since 1950. Perhaps the best works in the genre are Seamus Heaney's Glanmore Sonnets and Clearances, both of which use half rhymes, and Geoffrey Hill's mid period sequence An Apology for the Revival of Christian Architecture in England. The 1990s saw something of a formalist revival, however, and several traditional sonnets have been written in the past decade. Other modern poets, including Don Patterson, Edwin Morgan, Joan Brassa, Paul Muldoon, have used the form. Wendy Cope's poem Stress is a sonnet. Elizabeth Bishop's inverted sonnet was one of her last poems. Ted Berrigan's book, The Sonnets, is conventional almost exclusively in the line count. Paul Muldoon often experiments with 14 lines and sonnet rhymes, though without regular sonnet meter. The advent of the new formalism movement in the United States has also contributed to contemporary interest in the sonnet. This includes the invention of the word sonnet, which are 14 line poems with one word per line. Frequently elusive and imagistic, they can also be irreverent and playful. The Canadian poet Seymour Maine published a few collections of word sonnets, and is one of the chief innovators of the form. 
Contemporary word sonnets combine a variation of styles often considered to be mutually exclusive to separate genres, as demonstrated in works such as an ode to Mary. The Greek poet Yanis Levadas in 1993 invented the so-called fusion sonnet, which first appeared in a poetry collection entitled The Hanging Verses of Babylon, Omicron Iota Kappa Rho Epsilon Mu Alpha Sigma Tau Omicron Sigma Tau Chi Omicron Iota Tau Eta Sigma Beta Alpha Beta Upsilon Lambda Nu Alpha Sigma, Melanie Books, Athens 2007. Paulus Melissus, 1539-1602, was the first to use the sonnet in the Terza Rima in German lyric. In his lifetime he was recognized as an author fully versed in Latin love poetry. The sonnets to Orpheus are a cycle of 55 sonnets written in 1922 by the Bohemian-Austrian poet Reiner Maria Rielke, 1875-1926. It was first published the following year. Rielke, who is widely recognized as one of the most lyrically intense German-language poets, wrote the cycle in a period of three weeks experiencing what he described as savage creative storm. Inspired by the news of the death of Wera Alkan Anup, 1900-1919, a playmate of Rilke's daughter Ruth, he dedicated them as a memorial, or, literally grave marker, to her memory. In the Netherlands Pieter Cornelius Junhoeft wrote sonnets. A famous example is Main Leaf, Main Leaf, Main Leaf. Some of his poems were translated by Edmund Goss. More recent examples include Martinus Nijhoff and Jan Cal. In the Indian subcontinent, sonnets have been written in the Assamese, Bengali, Dagri, English, Gujarati. Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Malayalam, Manipuri, Marathi, Nepali, Oriya, Sindhi and Urdu languages. Urdu poets, also influenced by English and other European poets, took to writing sonnets in the Urdu language rather late. As Mitchell Khan, 1887-1923, is believed to have introduced this format to Urdu literature in the very early part of the 20th century. The other renowned Urdu poets who wrote sonnets were Akhtar Junagarhi, Akhtar Shirani, Noon Meem Rashid, Mer Lal Soni Zia Fata Badi, Salam Mishali Shahari on Waziraga. This example, a sonnet by Zia Fata Badi taken from his collection Mary Toster, is in the usual English, Shakespearean, sonnet rhyme scheme. Alexander Pushkin's novel in verse Eugene and Yagen consists almost entirely of 389 stanzas of iambic tetrameter with the unusual rhyme scheme, where the uppercase letters represent feminine rhymes while the lowercase letters represent masculine rhymes. This form has come to be known as the Yagen stanza or the Pushkin sonnet. Unlike other traditional forms, such as the Petrarchan sonnet or Shakespearean sonnet, the Inyagan stanza does not divide into smaller stanzas of four lines or two in an obvious way. There are many different ways this sonnet can be divided. In post-Pushkin Russian poetry, the form has been utilized by authors as diverse as Mikhail Lermontov, Vyacheslav Ivanov, Yurgis Baltrusitis and, in genres ranging from one stanza lyrical piece to voluminous autobiography. Nevertheless, the Inyagan stanza, being easily recognizable, is strongly identified as belonging to its creator. John Fuller's 1980 The Illusionists and John Stallworthy's 1987 The Nutcracker used this stanza form, and Vikram Seth's 1986 novel The Golden Gate is written wholly in and Yegan stanzas. The sonnet was introduced into Polish literature in the 16th century by Jan Kahanowski, Nikolai Sepserzynski and Sebastian Grabowiecki. Later in 1826 Adam Mikovich wrote a series known as Crimean Sonnets, which was translated into English by Edna Worthley Underwood. Sonnets were also written by Adam A. Esenik, Jan Kasprowitz, and Leopold Staff. Polish poets usually shape their sonnets according to Italian or French practice. The English sonnet is not common. Kasprowitz used a Shellian rhyme scheme, ABABCBCDCDEE. Polish sonnets are typically written in either hendecasyllables 5 plus 6 syllables, or Polish alexandrines, 7 plus 6 syllables. The sonnet was introduced into Czech literature at the beginning of the 19th century. The first great Czech sonneteer was Jan Koller, who wrote a cycle of sonnets named Slavitsera, the daughter of Slava, the daughter of fame. Koller was Slovak and a supporter of Pan-Slavism, but wrote in Czech, as he disagreed that Slovak should be a separate language. Collar's magnum opus was planned as a Slavic epic poem as great as Dandy's Divine Comedy. It consists of the prelude written in quantitative hexameters, and sonnets. The number of poems increased in subsequent editions and came up to 645. The greatest Czech Romantic poet, Karl Heinek Macha, also wrote many sonnets. 
In the second half of the 19th century Yaroslav Vertlicki published Sonnetti Samoter, Sonnets of a Solitudinarian. Another poet, who wrote many sonnets was Josef Svatoblikmacher. He published Chitri Nai Sonnetu, The Four Books of Sonnets. In the 20th century Vyacheslav Nesval wrote the cycle 100 Sonnetu Zakran Kinevekniho student the Roberta Davida, 100 Sonnets for the Woman Who Rescued Perpetual Student Robert David. After the Second World War the sonnet was the favorite form of Oldrich Violetal. Czech poets used different meters for sonnets, Kaller and Macha used decasyllables, Urchluk iambic pentameter, Antonin so the free verse, and Jiri Orton the Czech Alexandrine. Andre Haines wrote a monograph about Czech sonnets in the first half of the 20th century. In Slovenia the sonnet became a national verse form. The greatest Slovenian poet, Franz Prezerin, wrote many sonnets. His best-known work worldwide is Sonichnivnek, A Wreath of Sonnets, which is an example of Crown of Sonnets. Another work of his is the sequence Sonnetchen's Res, Sonnets of Misfortune. In writing sonnets Prezerin was followed by many later poets. After the Second World War sonnets remained very popular. Slovenian poets write both traditional rhyme sonnets and modern ones, unrhymed, in free verse. Among them are Melangesi and Ailes Devilyak. The meter for sonnets in Slovenian poetry is iambic pentameter with feminine rhymes, based both on the Italian and Decasiabo and German iambic pentameter. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.